Hi, I'm Mona. I'm a Palestinian artist based in Dubai. My studio space is at home. Uh, I usually work on my dining table or on the couch. My studio is my computer because I work with, you know, video and so I'm, everything is really in a digital space. And I think I like it that way. It, it suits my personality. I, not someone that likes to have a lot of stuff around. I kind of like that when I finish a project that, that it fits in a USB, like my artwork fits in a USB. I um, work with people who are either interested in movement or have, um, or work with their bodies, so dancers, actors, or performance artists. And we I hold, I hold these sessions where we um, where I give them movement exercises that they then go and, and film themselves doing and then they send me those videos for me to edit. And then um, we meet uh, in the next session where I show them the selected videos and we end up um, having a conversation about uh, the, the movements that we've collected and, and how the project is, the, the direction of the project. From there, uh, I give them new exercises and they, they um, go and, you know, and we, we continue this for a few sessions. Um, with that, then I move into, like, I guess the next phase, which is that I collect all these videos and layer them on top of each other. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I started to layer them because I accidentally once just opened a bunch of files and they just all were on top of each other and I quite liked how it looked. So um, I started to think about it as one piece instead of a sequence of clips. And so I, um, I so now I, I can't, I, you know, I, I do that um, while I'm editing. So I carefully select uh, which clip goes over the other, what, um, you know, I, I think about the composition, the color, the, the shapes, lines, it's been kind of an amusing challenge is that I ask the um, participants not to move in a way that is uh, functional. So we talk about, you know, what does it look like when you're doing nothing? And uh, how do you move when you're doing nothing? So th these are things that, you know, it, it's quite difficult to answer. There is not really an, an answer for it, but. Um, but as we're going through the footage, we're also kind of looking at things and being like, does that look like it was too much of a function or something that looked a little bit dancey? And so how do we, you know, navigate this? And so the, the rhythm is created by the edit, but not necessarily by the movement that's happening while it's being filmed. It seems easy to do nothing, but it's actually quite hard to, to create visuals about that. And so I remember that almost all of them were like, yeah, I can do nothing. Like, this is easy, you know? And then, and then as we progressed, they were like, it's not easy to do nothing. And it's not that it's not easy to do nothing, but I think it's also to think about what it is to move in a way that is not productive. So I would say that boredom is an underlining theme that I've had um, throughout my practice and I've explored it in different ways. So I think it's a conversation we've had also within our sessions, which is like the work, making the work can also be boring. Um, but then I also uh, think about how the audience um, may be bored while watching the work. And it's something that I actually um, like to welcome. And I think about how they would, um, their attention would, you know, focus in and out throughout uh, watching the piece if, if they choose to finish watching the piece. Um, when I feel stuck in my practice, um, I, I think this is a time where I, I do like to turn to some of the things that I listen to, but I also I, I kind of just keep um, I 
keep like an antenna up for any kind of left turn that I can sense uh, within the work. I do find that my work has shifted from, you know, um, the, the sports videos because I was much more concerned with like having everything really clean, very seamless loops, um, and just to like really kind of package, the, you know, to hold the movement within a loop. And, um, and to almost like erase myself from the work. And, but now I'm, you know, feeling more comfortable with, I guess you would say like maybe more choppy editing or, you know, something that actually doesn't loop at all. And it's just, you know, you know, something that runs for 10 seconds and ends and ends awkwardly even. And so, you know, there are times where I, I still want to kind of go back and, and, you know, I talk to them about like, can you just make sure you do it the way I like it, you know? But I do think that um, having them around has also helped me loosen up some of the parameters that I've set. But I think I get, I get inspired from the participants. And it's, it's not, it's because they challenge me. And so then, you know, when I'm looking at something, they also ask like, but why didn't you pick this? Or I really like this. Or and and it's not it's not that they challenge me in a way that I you know you know were in disagreement of anything. But it's more that I have I need to explain to them why something is working versus why something is not working. And in in that sense, then you need to ask yourself that, and that can be quite difficult to answer. Um, and um, I wanted to feel a little bit more free because I had somehow set up myself to, to do things in a way that felt um, kind of restrictive. Yeah. Sometimes I see my work uh, as something that doesn't necessarily need to be in the foreground and um, doesn't need um, to have, to kind of like take the attention of the room, you know. So um, I, I I like the idea that maybe it's sitting there with you. I'm looking forward to the show, my first solo show, and um, yeah, I'm really excited to see a space where I have you know more than one piece in, and that they're responding to each other. It's all been in my head right now, so I. I think I'm really looking forward to walking in and seeing everything up. So, and it's coming soon, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah.